Yeah, these are my disclosures and some are relevant to this talk. So meet Sandra, she's exactly what you were talking about. She plays soccer in a local team. She had her first uh, patella dislocation at an age of 14. She was treated conservatively. She went back to play. She played for well, quite some time and then she had a patella, second patella dislocation and then she is at your office now. So on clinical examination, she's got uh, various alignment. She's got a positive apprehension test. She's got a positive medial tilt. She's got lateral instability up to about 60 degrees of flexion and he has some, she has some increased tibial external rotation. She's a positive uh, J sign in this case. And this is on clinical examination. I think this is quite a useful algorithm for me to look at it clinically to get an idea. If you look instability from zero to 30, you're more in the passive restraints. If you have instability about to 60, you know the trochlea is a problem and then your instability continues over 60 degrees, you got, get into rotational abnormalities. It's just a, something that's of clinical use and she's just between like two and three. So then you do the imaging studies and she has a carton de champ of uh, uh, 1.2, some trochlea dysplasia, type P I would say here with the crossing sign. You do an MRI, she's got trochlear inclination angle of eight to 10 degrees, which we know from the literature, smaller than eight, 10 degrees might be an indication for a trochlear plasty. And she has a normal TTPCL uh, in, in, in this case. Rotation, we did rotational uh, CT scans. See, rotation is on the edge, uh, depending on the classification you use. It's not grossly abnormal, it's in the, in the uh, standard deviation range. So what, as a summary, we have this 15-year-old valgus alignment, mild rotation abnormality, patella alter, and trochlear dysplasia. So what are you going to do? Trochlear plastic distalization, MPFL, and isolated MPFL. Well, you can do what uh, exactly uh, Labras group described, and you see this nice uh, minimal invasive approach to this. You have distalization of all in once for this, for this girl, or you can do this type of operation. It's a small uh, incision, a medial an MPFL. So we'll look at the literature and uh, well, we see that uh, MPFL is really quite effective procedure. You see the high percentage of returns to sports after isolated MPFL in this, in this, uh, in this uh, situation. But more interesting when it comes to additional pathologies and here again, you see that isolated MPFL is an effective treatment, even in cases with uh, Re, re, with bony abnormalities, including DDGG, increased cathodic show index, and including trochlear dysplasia. So still an effective treatment procedure when you neglect all this. Well, another study, big numbers, we see that mild trochlear dysplasia up to category B, absolutely no risk of uh, re higher redislocation when you have increased, increased uh, trochlear dysplasia. Yes, it is, but also it is higher morbidity of the surgery. Again, another study, very interesting, uh, from Peter Balcharek and the, a big group of ASCA meta-analysis. Again, here you see significant improvements in patient-reported outcomes for patients undergoing MPFL, and in those undergoing trochlearplasty, but more complications with trochlearplasty and redislocation seven compared to 2.1 in the trochlearplasty group. Another study, pretty much same result, in, uh, in children, osseous abnormality did not matter as much as we, as we thought maybe previously. So it's your choice to do the left or to do the right operation. And now think if this girl would be your daughter, what would be your decision? So in summary, I think it's very important to analyze and understand the patient's problems of instability. It's not, you don't do an M MPFL because you only know an MPFL and have no idea about the rest of the patellofemoral joint. So it's important to know what is the situation and then you can just charge the risk versus the complication issue. Do not compromise on clinical examination. Again, if you all, you know about the, the patellofemoral joint is an MPFL, you should not do this at all. You have to know what's the underlying risk. And then to me, it's very important to look at the other knee. This girl has the same bony abnormalities on the other side. She never had a dislocation. She never had a problem there. So why well, we should change what's different to the other side and uh, operate on the difference in this case. Be sure and you operate on the difference. So always know the redislocation risk versus the surgical trauma 
Is 5% really worth the huge procedure and the huge cut on the, on the knee? Well, your first choice, I think, should be an isolated MPFL. Thank you very much.